Hey kids, welcome to another math lesson and this is for Eureka Math, Grade 5, Module 2, Lesson 5, Homework. Whew, that's a lot. And um, I just have to tell you how much I love the standard algorithm. I love the standard algorithm. We're going to be working on it today. Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> Yay! Something that I actually like. Yay! Okay, and I hope you are going to like it too. So uh, anyway, if you check out the objective at the bottom of the page, it says connect visual models and the distributive property to partial products of the standard algorithm without renaming. So basically what they're doing is they're giving you super duper easy factors that we can multiply without like all this regrouping and renaming and everything so that we can get really good at the strategy of using the distributive property and showing how the partial products build your final product. So what does all that mean? Well, let's check it out. And as always, go watch the problem set video first, really learn it, try the homework, then watch the homework video to help you uh, get through it and check your work correctly. Okay, so today we're going to draw an area model. Yay, that's not the worst of our tasks. And then solve using the standard algorithm. Yay. Use arrows to match the partial. Look at this. It says part right there. Part of the product, the partial products from the area model to the partial products in the algorithm. So sounds complicated, not complicated. Uh, let me set up the first one. You'll see what I mean. We're going to take our first factor, 24, and we're going to break it into each place values position value, like two in the tens place is worth 20, and four in the ones place is worth four, so you're splitting it out. Then we're going to take our 21, which is our second factor. Now, this is critical. You're going to stack it up from the biggest place value position to the smallest. Why? Well, because it's going to matter when we start tying the connection over to the standard algorithm. So what do I mean? I mean two tens are going to go down on the bottom and one one is going to go on the top. It has to be this way. It has to. Make your model this way and trust me, it matters. Do not write 21 going down. Do not do that. Go 21 going up. Okay? Why? Let me show you. Because this whole big box of multiplication fun is going to help you get your partial products like so. 20 times 1 is 20. 4 times 1 is 4. And it doesn't matter. You can say 1 times 4. It doesn't matter the order. Now here, we're going to have 20 times 20. So this is the 2 in the tens place times the 2 in the tens place, which is really 20 times 20. So we have 2 times 2 is 4, and then we have two zeros. Okay, so again, breaking it down to as easy as we possibly can. 20 times 4, again, 2 times 4, 8, with 1, 0, or 20 times 4 is 80. Okay, standard algorithm. <clears throat> What's happening over here? <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. It's my snack early. It was probably stuck in my throat. Anyway, <laughs> TMI, stop it. Um, 1 times 4, we're going to put here. In the standard algorithm, you will take the digit in the ones place on the bottom, on the right, or whatever digit is on the bottom on the far right first. And we're going to multiply it by each successive digit going across. But there aren't any other digits, so we're just going to do the two digits that are there. So it's 1 times 4 for 4, and 1 times 2 in the tens place, which is really 20. So 1 times 2 is 2. Now if you look at 1 times 24, yeah, you should get 24. If you look at your partial product, yes, you should get 24. And voila, draw the arrow. Do it, draw the arrow if you didn't already. The second partial product, and this is the really important thing with the standard algorithm. We are finished multiplying in the ones place. Therefore, nothing else has to go here. And I encourage my students to put in a little zero just to help them get over to the tens place. We are now multiplying with two tens. Therefore, our product or partial product on this line will start in the tens place because this is really 20 
times 24 is what we're going to put on this line. So since it's 20 times 24, or 20 times 4 for the first step, then if I'm holding this 0 because I'm done with that, then all I have to do is single digits. 2 times 4 is 8. Then I move it across. 2 times 2 is 4. And I get 480. Well, look, if I have 400 plus, well, not there, but here, plus, plus, moving across, I get my 480, which I can then add, because these are only partial products, part of a product, and then I can put it all together over here. 8 and 2 is 10, carry the 1, and then I have 5. 504 being your final answer, and you can write that on the line up there. So yay! It, it seems like a lot just because I'm trying to talk you through it, but once you get going, it's just so straightforward. Okay, let's make another one. Now we have 242, which we're going to put across the top. Two hundreds. Four tens for 40, and two ones. And then on the side... Make it two stories tall because we have 21. And remember how to stack up big numbers on the bottom, smaller numbers on the top. And we're going to be able to draw our arrows. So section it off into our three place value positions and start multiplying each row by each column. 1 times 200, 200. 1 times 40, 40. 1 times 2, 2. 20 times 200, don't lose track of your zeros. It's 2 times 2 for 4. We have a 0 here, and we have 2 zeros here, 1, 2. We have 20 times 40. 2 times 4 is 8. We have 1 0 here and 1 0 here. We have 20 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, and then we have the 0. So again, thinking about the value of each multiplication problem. And then when you put them together, I'm looking to get 242 on top and 4,840 on the bottom. So now let's check our standard algorithm and see what happens. 1 times 2, but also look, remember, hint, hint, 1 times a number is that number. So I should get 242. I should get 242. Let's break it up and go 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 4 is 4, 1 times 2 is 2. Yay, we did get 242. Next row, okay, so we've got our first partial product. The next row is going to be 20, the 2 in the tens place, times 242. Hold this with a 0 because we're done with the 1s and start doing our single digit multiplication. 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 2 is 4. Add up your partial products. Look, compare, 242. Look, compare, 4840. Yep. 2 plus 0, 2. 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 and 2 is 10. 4 and 1 is 5. 5,082 is your answer. Write it down on the line. Yay. Now they say, okay, you're experts with your box method, and now we're going to just focus on using the standard algorithm straighten this out because that bothers me when it's crooked and so we're going to have three by two so no problem set it up with three one four please give yourself some room and 22 be neat be straight line up place value columns line up place value columns it matters it totally matters start multiplying with the ones ready go 2 times 4, 2 times 1, 2 times 3. Next row, 0 first because we're done here. Move over to the tens place. 2 tens or 20 times 4 is 8 because, yeah, it's 80. Move on over to the next place value position. 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6. Add up your partial products. 8 and 0 is 8. 8 and 2 is 10. Carry the 1. Don't forget to count that. 6, 7, 8, 9, and 6. 6,908. Next one, 
413 times 22. Look, they love to have 22 as a factor. Nothing new there. Starting with the ones position, 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 4 is 8. Got to know your facts. Got to know your facts. Please work on those multiplication facts. Hold this spot with a zero because it will help you remember that the second line is really 20 or the, whatever digits here, it is not a single digit. It's really in the tens place, has the value of two tens. So two times three is six in the tens place. Two times one is two. Two times four is eight. And that makes sense that I would have eight, two, six, and then eight, two, six, zero, because they're both twos. Okay, remember that. Makes sense that we have six, two, eight, and six, two, eight, zero, because it's the same factor. Add these partial products together. Six, we have eight, we have 10, carry the one and nine. Nine, zero, eight, six, 9,086. Last one, 213 times 32. Keep your place value positions lined up neatly. Two times three is six. Two times one is two. Two times two is four. What do you do next? Put a zero in the ones place because we're done with the ones and now we're in the tens. Three times three is nine. Three times one is three. Three times two is six. Finally, something interesting happening here with different numbers. Six plus zero, six, nine plus two is 11. Carry the one and then add it. Four, five, six, seven, eight and the six. Commas for four or more. Actually, I usually don't put a comma in, not gonna lie. I usually put them in for five digits, but I'm being super disciplined today. Okay, word problems. A young snake measures 23 hundredths meters long. During the course of its lifetime, he will grow to be 13 times his current length. What will his length be when he is full grown? So if you've got this measurement and he's gonna grow 13 times that, yes, that is what you're going to do for your, uh, for your problem. You're gonna set it up with the standard algorithm. Now, if you wanna use the area model, that's totally fine, but I'm gonna set it up with the standard algorithm. Now, first of all, if you are multiplying with decimals, Go ahead and set it up just like it is. And we can multiply with the decimal. I'll show you how to do this even though it comes up in a later module. Let's pretend like that's not there because it's kind of not relevant until we have to get our answer. Do the strategy that we just did. Three times three, nine, three times two, six. Forget about that other stuff for a minute. Hold it with a zero, done with that. One times three is three, one times two is two. Add up your partial products, nine, nine, two. Now, what am I doing with this? Remember that we can name something with unit value like this in order to take out the decimal, like so. Now, we're really just doing what I did when I covered up that confusing stuff, and we're handling it as though it's ones. Three times three, nine, three times two, six, hold it, three, two, add nine, nine, two. Okay, so what do I do? Well, how do you know how to place the decimal is by looking at the place value positions that are being multiplied by each other. Hundredths on the top, ones below. Anything times ones is one, is the other number. Blah! Oh my gosh. Anything times ones is whatever the other one is. So this is going to have an answer in hundredths, hundredths because that was what our one factor was. Okay, this is ones, this is hundredths. So the reason I can place the decimal here is because it's supposed to be 299 hundredths, 299 hundredths. This is the answer in unit form. This is the answer in standard form. So, uh, oh, and you also have to label it uh, meters. There you go. 299 hundredths meters. Okay. And um, so we're going to get into this a little bit more as we go through, especially when we multiply with decimals. So 
They, I love how they just throw this stuff in there when you haven't had any practice with it. That sarcasm, again, sorry, they just love to put these things in there, and that's okay. We're just going to learn it in small doses. Anyway, um, click subscribe. Come back again. Uh, I do try to help you guys with these videos. But be honest. Do the work first, and think about it, and listen to all the coaching. Zenin. Zenin? Zen? I'm not quite sure. Zenin earns $142 per shift at his new job. During a pay period, he works 12 shifts. What would his pay be for that period? $142 per shift, 12 shifts. Take your money, 142, multiply it by the 12 shifts. Standard algorithm. There is no decimal here, so it's all whole numbers, which makes it very easy. You should be able to do this on your own. Try it. Pause the video. Check in a minute. Okay. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 2 times 1 is 2. Hold this with a 0. We're on line 2. Start with a 0 because we've got to get to the tens place. 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 4 is 4, 1 times 1 is 1. Add your partial products so that you can get the total. 4, 8 and 2 is 10. Carry the 1. It doesn't matter where you put the 1. It does not matter. Some people, I'm used to putting it up top. Some people said recently, oh, we should put it down on the bottom. Whatever, just count it. Four, five, six, seven, and a one. That's all whole numbers. It's ones times ones for ones, which is money. And Zenin, always write the word answer because if it's a word problem, it needs a word answer. Zenin earns $1,704 uh, during that pay period. Or during that period. There you go. So I hope this one's helpful. We are definitely going to spend a lot more time using the standard algorithm this year. So practice, 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 and know those facts. We will see you on the next video. Bye for now.